Okay, I want to share some thoughts on Genesis 6. I haven't talked about it for a while, so let's get at it. Um, so, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Okay, now first of all, uh, let us understand that it says here, it came to pass when men began to multiply, okay, as we read in Genesis 1, where uh, man is ordered, or instructed, I should, should, uh, should say, to be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, okay, and have dominion. Alright, so... This is what they did, <laughs> naturally. They had babies, lots of babies, and they uh, subdued the earth and had dominion over it. Okay, so when you read, daughters were born unto men, and then in the next sentence it says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, you can equate the daughters with the daughters that are born to the men and then the sons of God to the men that had the daughters. Okay. Pretty simple stuff. All right. Now, there are um, people that are blind, ignorant, uh, not very bright, if you will, who will say that these are angels. Okay. Now, if... It, one thing you can do is just go do a quick word search for the word angel, and it's not anywhere. Zero, zero, zero. That word is not in Genesis 6. Now, you could do something like this. Men mentioned 23 times, I think. No, it's mentioned not quite that many times. Not that quite. Let's see if we can. That's one we could count. One, two, three, four, five times. Okay, five times. Twenty-three times. Forget that. Five times. That's enough, isn't it? Okay, but it doesn't just say. It doesn't just say men. Okay, so you got son. Okay, and that's actually we're only talking about seven verses. Here, okay, because once we get to verse 8, we're talking about Noah. All right, so let's just keep an eye on this here. When it, it came to pass, when men began to multiply, God saw the daughters of men. In verse 4, daughters of men, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So if there was any doubt, that this is talking about man that should be eliminated there in or should be you know satisfied there in verse four. Okay, man, let's see. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Alright, so again, if you're confused and thinking this is talking about angels, verse three should cl clear that up. Alright, so my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh. All right, so man, men, mighty men, men of renown, sons of God. All right, so and daughters of men. Uh, the man, the I'm sorry, the daughter belongs to her father until her father gives her in marriage. So let's just take a look at some examples here. Uh, let's go. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage. So that, that's what that means. When a man marries a woman or when, <clears throat> excuse me, or when a father gives his daughter. When a father gives his daughter. The daughters of men, all right, you see the connection there? It's, it's 
pretty obvious, I think, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. All right, so these daughters of men, the daughters belong to the father until the father gives them to the man that wants to marry her. Very simple. All right, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Okay, and then we go to verse 4. Uh, keep in mind this word giants. Giants means giant men. It doesn't mean angels. It doesn't mean UFO aliens. It doesn't mean Martians. It means giant men. And we get examples of that uh, a few times. Um, there's not a lot of mentions of giants. Okay, let's see if we can find a really good example. Um, Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. All right, he was a man. All right, and clearly, um, all these giants that are being talked about, they're all men. Every single time. It talks about giants. It's talking about men. All right. Okay. Pretty, pretty simple, basic stuff. Sons of the giants would also be men. Okay. And born to the giant. All right. Talking about a guy with six toes, six fingers, born to the giant. And so on and so forth um, so uh, you know pretty obvious uh, these guys these giants are men giant men very tall very big men all right so uh, before the flood uh, these giant men were becoming more prominent and more influential and more powerful and after living hundreds of years with that sort of dominance, um, it made the world um, so corrupt that there was no saving it. And God saw that the wickedness of man, notice that, man, not angels. It wasn't the angels having sex with women, as some people will have you believe. It was man. Okay, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. So if it was all about angels having sex, then why didn't why couldn't God see the wickedness of angels? No, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, let's see uh, if we can make a comparison here in Matthew 24 but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be well in the days of Noah every imagination of the thoughts of his heart man's heart was only evil continually <clears throat> excuse me and so obviously that's happening today especially when you consider these perverts who are imagining angels are coming down and having sex with your daughters all right uh, it's ridiculous okay there's no way around it it's just st straight up ridiculous all right so and it repented and it repented to the lord that he had made man now he didn't repent the lord that he made these angels that had that are having sex with these daughters it repented the Lord that he had made man, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, fowls. It repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, so uh, God provided man with an escape, all right? And uh, he's doing that again uh, today. We have a, an escape through the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Escape from this wicked world that we're living in. 
All right. And so I mean, it's pretty simple, straightforward stuff. If you are imagining UFO aliens, that's really what you're doing. You're imagining UFO aliens are coming down and having sex with women. It's, there's no other way. I mean, if you're being honest with yourself, that's what you think is happening. There's no mention of UFO aliens, no mention of angels, no mention of strange breeds. In fact, we can go and see for a fact that Eve is the mother of all living. Of course, okay. So the only way to get around this is to basically say God is a liar, right? Say that the Bible's not true and that you are the only one with special uh, knowledge, okay? So how's that saying go? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, for shall the work of for shall the work say of him that made it, he may be not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? So are you saying God doesn't understand or that um, God didn't do this? God didn't make, you know, this or that? Basically is what, happening, is what happens when people say, um, you know, these UFO aliens are coming down and having sex with women. It's uh, imagination based on lust. Okay. Now, let's go. Let's see if we can do this. Go to right here. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For as in Adam, all die. So all means everybody is dying in Adam. That means there's no creatures outside of Adam or Eve. Eve being the mother of all living, and 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 in Adam all die. All right, there's no wiggle room right there. So you got Adam and Eve covered. So that means every man, woman on earth who has ever been here has been a, has been from Adam and Eve. Okay, even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. So believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be made alive okay the first Adam was made a living soul the last Adam which is Jesus Christ was made a quickening spirit all right so um, it's very very simple stuff there is no angels having sex this is just purely an oversexed imagination thinking that UFO aliens are coming down and having sex with women. It's not in the Bible. It'll sell a lot of books. It'll, a lot of, it'll um, itch a lot of ears. I mean, people love to hear about that sort of stuff. Juicy, juicy sex talk about aliens coming down and having sex with women. But the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. All right, so uh, this is about as clear an example as you're going to see in life. When you see people making this wild, ridiculous claim that angels are coming down, <clears throat> excuse me, having sex with women. It's not there in the Bible, right? And there's one verse that you cannot get around. <laughs> and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Okay, all these troubles are because angels are having sex with women, yet the dumb Lord says, oh, I, it repents me that I made man. The Lord can never figure out it was angels doing it. Nowhere. He said, I'll destroy man from the face of the earth. Why would he destroy man when it was the angels having sex with women? Hmm? All right. It's just uh, oversexed imagination. That's all it is.